in talking about Jesus, we talked about the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, <clears throat> and some of the sources of them, and that actually Mark was probably the main earliest source of all of them. But we also call them synoptic Gospels. That is, they said they had the same point of view, and they almost all had the same events, the same kinds of stories, and the same order of events. And that's why a, a harmony of the Gospels, as I had mentioned before, it's quite interesting when you when you read that, you will see the great similarities between these three Gospels in many, many places. Now, we also mentioned that among those Gospels, John is not like any of them. He is not like any of them. He is totally uh, different than all of them. Um, I heard one scholar say about this, that these other Gospels, the Synoptic Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, looked at the outside events in Jesus' life, including miracles and all kinds of things. These are the events that were outside that everybody knew about. But John looks inside of Jesus, not outside of Jesus like the four Gospels, the three Synoptic Gospels. And in John's uh, book, of course, there are things that are omitted that are in the other Gospels. For example, there is no birth record, no baptism, no temptation, no demons, no transfiguration, no Last Supper, no uh, ascension. And uh, among all the miracles, there are only seven miracles in John and hardly much at all about the kingdom. But John added five new miracles that are not in the <clears throat> Synoptic Gospels at all. So you see, John doesn't have so much events as the inner side of Jesus. That's another side of Jesus than the three Synoptic Gospels. So what you will find when you read the Gospel of John about Jesus is what he was like inside along with what he was like outside in the synoptic other three gospels and what john does there many times it is jesus speaking for himself to an audience whether he's speaking to pharisees and scribes whether he's speaking to other people of his own ancestry and so forth He's always speaking about himself. And whatever happens in there, it's the internal Jesus that you see. And also you will find that uh, in the Gospel of John, you have the word logos, L-O-G-O-S, that is not in any of the other Gospels. And that's an ancient word that comes from Greek and it has a great deal to do with early Greek philosophers. Now, it doesn't mean that John was a Greek philosopher, but evidently he was familiar with that entire culture, and he used that word for what it was worth in their uh, interpretation, but he went beyond that to show what the Logos was. So if you read Genesis 1.1, and John 1.1, 1, 1, you are finding out the same thing, that the Word is the Logos, ever-present, before anything else ever happened, was completely with God, even before anything was created. This is the invisible God, the God of all, the God who cannot be known or talked about, very, very similar to the Tao Te Ching, in fact. In fact, when you are reading the Tao Te Ching, you will find some things very, very similar in there. In fact, I have some books about the Tao Te Ching and the Bible by a Chinese philosopher. We will also talk about that eventually because it's very worthwhile. But at least this way you get an idea of what Jesus is saying related to what gospel you are reading. For instance, Matthew was a Jewish author. 
but the others were not. He was the only Jewish author among all those who did the synoptic gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. So these things you will find about Jesus depending on which gospel you read. But we will also share soon a little bit about that Tao Te Ching and the Bible because you will be surprised at the relationships between all of these.